Okay, so when you open Deep Learning Studio, uh, you get to the recent project uh, dialogue. So it is the project that you have opened recently. Here I have opened recently all the uh, projects that are in the Deep Learning additional resources. So you can see the mini workflows data sets, don't type data set, for example. I just need to double click on any of those to open. I can also directly open a project by clicking here. And for example, here I can go to the stone ties and I just have to open the stone ties EDL proj file to open the project. As you can see, a project uh, is made of one file and several folders. So uh, we have an image folder where all the images are copied and imported. And we have one folder per tool that contains several files uh, that represent uh, the train tools. And also a result folder that contains all the results for this tool. So if I open this project, we see uh, that Studio opens the project and we see directly uh, the list of image, the list of level. Uh, that we want to recognize. So as you see, there is three defect level for the tone style data set. I can click on uh, image in the list to display it uh, in the image viewer uh, next to it. And when, uh, so you can see that the main interface of Deep Learning Studio is organized around uh, six tabs, which more or less represents uh, the steps that you need to do to get to your final production model. So first, you need to create your data set and annotate all your images, or at least part of the images in your data set. The second step is to create uh, splits. So a split is a division uh, of your data set into three parts, uh, a training part, a validation part, and a test part. As we'll see in the next two sessions, it's really important to split uh, your data set to get a good uh, estimation of the performance of your tools uh, in production. The third tab is the data augmentation tab. Uh, so data augmentation is a way of uh, performing random transformation uh, on the image. Uh, and it allows you to artificially increase the number of images in data set. It usually makes uh, your models more robust by using the augmentation because you can introduce various symmetries and transformation that the deep learning model will be able to handle. The first, the fourth tab is the tool tab. It is where you create, configure, uh, and train uh, all your tools. Uh, so you can create as many tools as you want. The fifth tab is the validation and result tab. So this is where you can select a tool and look at the results uh, for this tool. So here we have various uh, metrics and uh, tables that you can use to filter the image list, for example, and to analyze uh, where the model made mistakes. And finally, we have the inference test, uh, where you can quickly load a few new images uh, that you have kept apart and uh, compute the results uh, using one of the tools uh, on these images. So let's try to do uh, all these steps uh, by creating a new project and uh, doing the annotation, trying to train a tool to see how it works really. So I click on new to create a new project. So when we create a new project, uh, we need to specify its name, its path, and the type of project. So here I will create a mini workflows project. So I name it mini workflows. It will be an easy classifier project. You can select uh, also the other libraries if you want. You have also the description and various uh, limitation and constraint of each of the tools. And by default, uh, the project will be saved in a folder in your documents folder, the Resist Deep Learning Studio Projects uh, folder, and then the name of the project. 
So there I have created the project. Uh, by default, uh, it will contain no images and it contains a single label that is default. Uh, also, as you can see here at the top left uh, of this tab, we have import images into project directory that is uh, checked by default. Uh, if you intend to work uh, on several computers with, a, with the same project or work uh, with several people on this project, you need to leave uh, this option checked. What it does is copy all the images that you add to the project into the images folder, and it allows you to move uh, the project to another computer without uh, any problem. So here, my first step will be to add images. So I will go to my old mini waffles project and select all the image. So I do a control A to select all the image in this folder. And here I can add all the image in the data set. So as you can see now, we have 463 images in the data set, but all of these images are unlabeled. This means that we have not any ground rules for the images. So before annotating all the image, we need to define uh, what we want to do uh, with this data set. What do we want to recognize uh, for this particular image? So this is done in the image labels. So we need to define the list of characteristics that we want to recognize in the image. So in this case, it's pretty simple. It's a basic defect detection case. So the two labels will be good and not good. So you can also change the color associated with the label. So for example, we can put the good label in green and the bad label in red. Uh, as you see, the image count for each of the label is still zero, uh, and we have still zero labeled image. In order to label an image, you can uh, click here on the image, and you can select uh, the appropriate label. So for example, this one is a bad image, as you can see in its name. You can also see uh, the part of the waffle that is missing. So it is a not good image. So here, in order to annotate more quickly, and because I know that all the images are correctly named, so all of the not good images have bad in the name, I can directly here tap type bad. It will filter all the images by the name. And so here, I only have image files that have bad in the name. So it allow me to uh, select all uh, the images in the list, so all the images that have bad in the file name, then I can do a right click, set label, not good. As you can see, we have now 222 images that are labeled, and these 222 images are all part of the not good label. So now I can do exactly the same with uh, good images. I search for good. I select all the images using Control A, right click, set level, good. And now we have all 463 images that are correctly labeled. And we have 241 good images. So the second step is to go to the data set split tab. Uh, so we can we need to create a new split. So uh, we can name the split uh, by default. It's named split one, and then we can choose the number of images in each set or the proportion of images in each set. So uh, the image will be randomly selected to be part of each of these sets. So by default, it's 70, 20, 10 percent proportion uh, of the data set. So I will leave it by default. And so if I select the split, again, I see uh, various statistics about this particular split. And I see also uh, the, the data set split for each image individually. The third step is to configure data motion settings that are good for your specific data set. 
So by default, there is an empty data augmentation settings that do not do, uh, do not perform any data augmentation, but we can create as many settings as you want to perform various tests, for example, in the data. So if we select an image here for the image viewer, we can also have various visualization of the data augmentation settings that we have uh, set. Uh, so for example, here, because the waffles are more or less a circle, we can introduce a 180 degrees rotation. And so if I click on random rotation, then it means that during training, we will perform a random uh, transformation between plus and minus 180 degrees uh, before training with this image. So we can also do vertical and horizontal flip. And just these three settings uh, can be enough for this data set. So the fourth step is to go to the Tools tab. And I will create a new tool. So by default, you see that the tool is not trying. Uh, I will leave all the settings by default. So you see that here, uh, the only speed that we have created was selected automatically. Here, I will select the augmentation settings. Uh, I will train for 50 iteration because maybe we do not have time to do long training here. And then I simply click on train and the training uh, is started. As you can see at the top of the screen, we see processing one task queued. Uh, what it means is that we can launch uh, several tasks concurrently. So if I add a new tool, I'll also say 10 iteration. I can start the training here, and it will be put in the queue here. As you can see, we have the tool one that is currently training and tool two that is waiting uh, for the GPU. We can launch uh, as many training as we want concurrently. As you will see, the first tool is already trained and the second tool is currently being trained. And also, we can reorder uh, the list uh, of tasks that are waiting to be processed. Uh, so that if you have a new experiment that you want to do uh, and do quicker, you can uh, put it higher in the processing list. So as you can see, uh, small training uh, with 10 iteration can already give a pretty good result. Here we have 97% accuracy on the validation set. Uh, and it was done in only a few seconds on a laptop uh, GPU. So while uh, Deep Learning Studio is training various tools, we can already go into the next tab, the Validation and Result tab, to look at the results uh, of the tool that I finished training. So here we can select the tool for which we want to see the result. So we leave at Result at Tool 1. We can uh, also filter by the part of the data set that we want to analyze, so training, validation, and, or test set, or all the sets, all the images together. And then we can analyze and see where the model made a mistake. So here we have a good images, so an image that we have labeled as good, but that was predicted as not good. And we see in uh, the result, we have a probability list for each of the labels. And we see it's more like 50-50. So the model did not know really which label it was. So maybe training uh, a few iteration more would help the neural network uh, get more clear-cut results in this case. Uh, also, we can uh, display the heat map, which will show more or less uh, an approximate localization of the defect. So as you can see here, it already shows uh, quite accurately uh, a missing part of the waffle. So finally, we have the inference test tab where we can add new images or add a folder of image. So let's say I want to add a single image. Uh, and then I can compute the result for this image. So I will click on play to compute the result. However, there are currently uh, tools uh, that are training uh, in the tools tab, 
And so it, the weather computation that we have launched here needs to wait for uh, the tool to finish. So I can stop here. And now we have the uh, result that is already computed. So I can also display the heat map. I can go to result air. We have uh, the probability list. We have the processing time of four minutes seconds. Uh, we can have also uh, various characteristic characteristics of the image. So maybe let's open a few data sets, uh, like an easy locate data set to look uh, a bit at the images. I just add a new object. So as you can see here, this is the annotation for easy locate. I can uh, look at the labels that we have assigned. And if we go to the validation and result tab, we can look uh, at the result uh, for each image, each image individually. And here are the results for example for the easy locate library. So when you are happy with the result of your model, uh, you need to go back to the tools tab and export your model by clicking on the export button. And then you will export a deep learning tool, an LCL file that you can open with the deep learning API. 